I love Sower LA. Sower LA is at Holy Name of Jesus Catholic Church, 1955 West Jefferson, in the heart of Los Angeles, where brothers and sisters come from all around Los Angeles. They come just as they are. We pray in the presence of the Santissimo and receive our healing and our blessings. We share our testimonies and God is providing miracles after miracles. We're setting the captives free, saving souls for Jesus. I'm Deacon Doug Johnson, Holy Name of Jesus. Don't forget, we meet every Thursday from 7.30 to 9.30. May Almighty God bless each and every one of you real good. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. My beautiful sister, YouTuber Lissy. Lissy, I want to know what was your experience like here at Sower LA? I really, really love it. The worship is so beautiful and it's such an engaging, peaceful, healing environment. I think my favorite thing was when we did kind of popcorn prayer requests and everyone just shared what was on their heart and what they were really struggling with. It just made me feel so connected to everyone and just so much hope that we can pray together as a community. So, can you give us a shout out, Lizzy? Come to visit Sower LA every Thursday at 7.30. See you guys next Thursday. God bless you. Take care. As a Sower ministry, we invite you to visit our website at www.jesusasower.com where you can watch testimonies, leave prayer requests, listen to Bible study, stay up to date with the Sower's latest events, and much more. Remember, it's www.jesusasower.com or you can learn more about the sower as well as El Sembrador Ministries at www.elsembrador.org. We invite you to tune in to Empowered by the Spirit on its new time every Sunday at 9 p.m. here through ESNE Radio. Gia Chacon, and I want to say hi to everyone at CDJ Esne, and I want to invite you to invite the Holy Spirit as a power in your life, but also as a person in your life. Jesus Christ, when he initiated his ministry, he was the first person to talk about the Holy Spirit as a personal friend. And when Jesus ascended into heaven, he promised that he would send the Holy Spirit as a comforter and a friend to walk with you in your daily life and every aspect of your life and to lead you in your call toward Christ. Every day is a new opportunity to thank God for the message that He conveyed through the Holy Scripture that transforms and heals lives. The Sower Apostolate's mission is to communicate God's message through the programming that we transmit. And to continue doing this, we need your support. We invite you to keep donating and being a part of this mission. For more information, call us at 877-714-5679.
Cause Christ walks with you every mile And the sufferings of life last only a while But heaven is our final destination So consider this for your daily Bible meditation No need for anxiety or trifle trepidation Carry a cross like a disciple with dedication Knowing what awaits us is eternal jubilation Now let's go to the book of Revelation In heaven every tear will be wiped away There will be no more darkness, only brightness a day No more pains and sufferings cause the price has been paid So take off that sad facade And smile cause you a child of God You're on the winning squad, ain't no need to preocupar but if you feel like nobody cares about what you've been through I'm here to tell you that Jesus walks along with you So wipe the dust off your feet Go march along to the beat And now the chorus repeats Go on and put on a smile Cause Jesus loves you my child There ain't no need to be down So take that big frown And turn it around Right now go on and put on a smile because you're God's precious child A smile is really a frown It's just been turned upside down So turn it around right now Go on and put on a smile I got more problems than I got answers But I keep my faith in God Through all these different circumstances No matter what no man says I'm living the gospel joyfully Just like Pope Francis So if you feel like life is weighing you down like gravity Thinking it's a tragedy Wondering why do bad things always happen to me Back up You don't happen to see the blessings You only see the things that are distressing Plus all things work for good for those who love God Romans 8.28 So be patient and wait Through the trials and tribulations you could grow in the virtue of patience and if you feel you can't cope remember god got for you a future full of hope jeremiah 29 11 that hope is eternal life in heaven so stop your groaning and quit your whining because every cloud got a silver lining but it's up to you for finding even though it might seem like the lightning is frightening and uninviting soon afterwards the sun will be rising because through the thunderstorms come down the showers which provides the growth that is needed for the flowers isn't it awesome how God makes use of the trials of life so we could blossom Cause life is beautiful, life is precious For you to give infinite yeses To God who blesses and makes good come out your messes so if you feel like nobody cares about what you've been through I'm here to tell you that Jesus walks along with you So wipe the dust off your feet, go march along to the beat And now the chorus repeats Go on and put on a smile Go put on a smile do my child. There ain't no need to be down uh -huh. So take that big frown And turn it around Right now Go on and put on a smile Go put on a smile Because you're God's precious child You're his precious child So if you start to feel blue Cause all the things you've been through Remember God loves you Me too Go on and put on a smile <laughs> Sunny day, another bright blue sky. I'll be praising God until the day I die. da 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 da
articulate with a thousand tongues to lift one cry. Then from the north and south and east to west, we'd hear Christ be magnified. Hi guys, my name is Jesse Vieira and I'm a leader at SOAR LA. Come check us out Thursdays nights at 7.30 at Holy Name of Jesus on Jefferson and next to Arlington. Find us at 7.30 praise and worshiping with our new band called Heaven Sound. Amazing band, it will touch you, your heart, and you will feel God, I guarantee you. So we look forward to seeing you there at SOAR LA. God bless. Welcome to SOAR LA Virtual Encounter Night. We're so happy for you to join us today. Um, as you can see and you can tell, today we're starting a little bit earlier, and that is because we do have a little change in our agenda tonight. It's not that big of a difference, but I hope you guys can follow along as you always do. Thank you so much for joining us today. So today, instead of doing the Divine Mercy Rosary, we will be continuing the SOAR LA Healing Through Unity Mary Undoer of Knots Novena. And tonight it will be led by our brother Walter and our sister Marie Cruz. So uh, without further ado, um, let's go ahead and get started with our Novena, which is dedicated um, for all of us to come together as one in prayer to the end of the sin of racism, the end of racial discrimination and the end of police brutality. Uh, without further ado, um, Brother Walter and Sister Marie Cruz, uh, you guys can go ahead and start with our novena. Th thank you for that, Sister Rosa. Okay, and uh, as we start off, uh, we'll make the sign of the cross in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. Oh, my God. 
I am hardly sorry for having offended. I detest all my sins because I dread the loss of heaven and the pain of hell. But most of all, because I offended you. Oh my God, who are all good and deserving of all my love, I firmly resolve with the help of your grace to confess my sins, to do penance, to amend my life. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us for our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it is, was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us for our sins, save us from the fire of hell. Lead all souls into heaven, especially those who are in the most need of thy mercy. The first luminous mystery is the baptism of Jesus. And when Jesus was baptized, the heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting him on him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. And the fruit of the mystery is openness to the Holy Spirit. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is on heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses <clears throat> as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, a world without end. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fire of hell, Lead all the souls to heaven, especially those who are in the most need of thy mercy. The second luminous mystery is the wedding of Cana. Okay. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water and they filled them up to the brim. Fruit of the mystery to Jesus through Mary. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us for our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Bless art thou among women, and bless the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and it ever shall be, world without end. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fire of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those who are in the most need of thy mercy. Third luminous mystery, the proclamation of the kingdom of God. And preach as you go, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. You receive without pay, give without pay. Fruit of the mystery, repentance and trust in God. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, and save us from the fire of hell. Lead all the souls to heaven, especially those who are in most need of thy mercy. All right, and uh, meditation uh, for day five. Mother, I'm doer of knots, generous, compassionate. We come to you yet today to entrust uh, these knots in our lives to, to you and ask the divine wisdom to undo under the light of the Holy Spirit his narrow problems. No one ever saw you angry. To the contrary, your words were so charged with sweetness 
after the Holy Spirit was manifested upon your lips. Take away from us the bitterness, anger, and hatred which these thoughts has caused us. Give us, O oh dearest mother, some of the sweetness and wisdom that is all silently reflected in your heart. And just as you were presented at Pentecost, ask Jesus to send us a new presence of the Holy Spirit at this moment in our lives. Holy Spirit, come upon us. Mary, adore of not, pray for us. Mary with God is powerful. And uh, the fourth luminous uh, mystery, that transfiguration. And he was praying. The appearance of his counter countenance was altered and his raiment became dazzling white. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. Fruit of the mystery. Mystery. Uh, desire for holiness our father who are in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us for our and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil amen Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fire of hell, Lead all the souls to heaven, especially those who are in the most need of thy mercy. And uh, the, set, the fifth luminous uh, mystery, the institution of the Eucharist. And he took breath, and uh, when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. And likewise, the cup after supper, saying, this cup, which is poured out for you, is the new covenant of in my blood, through the mystery adoration. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
give us this day our daily bread and forgive us or forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil amen hail mary full of grace the lord is with thee blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death amen hail mary full of grace the lord is with thee blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death amen hail mary full of grace the lord is with thee blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Amen. <clears throat> Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us for our sins, and save us from the fire of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those who are in the most need of thy mercy. And a closing prayer here. Virgin Mary, mother of fair love, mother who never refuses to come to the aid of a child in need, mother whose hands never cease to serve, your beloved children because they are moved by the divine love and immense mercy that exists in your heart cast your compassionate eyes upon us see the gnaw the snarl of knots that exist in our lives you know very well how desperate we are in our pain how we are bound by these knots mary mother to whom god entrusted the undoing of the knots in the lives of his children we entrust to we entrust into your hands the ribbon of our lives. Not even the evil one himself can take it away from your precious care. In your hands there is no knot that cannot be undone. Powerful uh, Mother, by your grace and intercessory power with your Son and my Liberator, Jesus, take into your hands to lay these knots that we offer you in the silence of our hearts. We beg you to undo it for the glory of God once for all in your hope. Oh, my lady, you are the only consolation God gives us, the fortification of our feeble strength, the enrichment of the destitution, and with Christ, the freedom from our chains. Hear our pleas. Keep us, guide us, protect us, O oh, safe refuge. Mary, undoer of knots, pray for us.
And before we end our rosary, I would like us to come together on to do our prayer to overcome racism. Mary, friend and mother to all, through your son, God has found a way to unite himself to every human being, called to be one people, sisters and brothers to each other. We ask for your help in calling on your son, seeking forgiveness for the times when we have failed to love and respect one another. We ask for your help in obtaining from your son the grace we need to overcome the evil of racism and to build a just society. We ask for your help in following your son so that prejudice and animosity will no longer infect our minds or hearts, but will be replaced with a love that respects the dignity of each person. Mother of the church, the spirit of your son Jesus warms our hearts. Pray for us, amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you, Brother Walter and Sister Marie Cruz for leading us in our novena tonight. Just a friendly reminder to please continue to join us. Our novena is until June 15th, which is Monday, every single night until June 15th at 7 p.m. here on our Facebook page and YouTube. Thank you so much for, for leading us tonight. Let us continue with our program. Um, today, we will start our program with praise and worship, and then we will continue with our guest speaker. Um, so without further ado, uh, let me introduce our house band, Heaven Sound, who will lead us in praise and worship. How's it going, my brothers and sisters? My name is Jesse Vieira. My name is Maria. John Martin. And we're here to sing some praise and worship with you guys. The first song that we're going to sing is called Our God. Water you turn into wine. Open the eyes of the blood There's no one like you None like you Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you, Lord, none like you. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Our God is greater. Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And what could stand against? God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God, our God is greater, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other. God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. 
praise your name, Lord. I 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 praise your name, Lord Jesus Christ. Me, my family, and my wife. I praise. I praise. I praise your name, Lord Jesus Christ. Come and enter to my life. I praise. I praise. I praise. I praise. I praise. I praise your name, Lord Jesus Christ. Spread your love, your sacrifice. I praise, I praise, I praise, I praise, I praise. With Mother Mary by your side, I lift you on high. Brothers, sisters, priests, and nuns, I lift you on high. With faith, we trust in you. Come and make us new. I praise your name, Lord, because I love you. I praise your name, Lord. 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 I praise your name, Lord Jesus Christ. Me, my family, and my wife. I praise. I praise. I praise your name, Lord Jesus Christ. Come and enter to my life. I praise. I praise. I praise. Praise, I praise, I praise your name, Lord Jesus Christ. Spread your love, your sacrifice. I praise, I praise, I praise, I praise, I praise. With Mother Mary by your side, I lift you on high. With brothers, sisters, priests, and nuns, we lift you on high. With faith, we trust in you. Come and make us new. I praise your name, Lord, because I love you. I praise your name, Lord. I praise your name, Lord. I praise your name, Lord. I praise your name, Lord.
shines like the sun and all our love is brilliant the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my for me at this one at this time right now I want you to keep your hands up in the air and I want you to close your eyes and sing with us Worthy is the land who was slain. Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the land who was slain. Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the land who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Oh, this is amazing grace. This is a failure. Thank you so much for inviting us tonight to sing some praise and worship with you for our final song this this song is called you're here and that's actually a song that i wrote so i really hope you guys enjoy this and thank you once again can see you, Lord. I can feel you, Lord. My heart knows you're here. When my ears can't hear you, Lord, I still feel you, Lord. My heart knows you're here. My heart knows you're here. You're here. You're here. Knows you're here, you're here, you're here. Jesus is here. Cause the Lord is my ship in despair. And my loathing in my heart, yeah, he is it. 
Every challenge, every doubt, for He is it. Through this prayer I proclaim, Jesus Christ is King. Close your eyes and feel your King is King. Our King is King. Our Lord is King. Jesus is King. Holy Spirit is King. Our God is King. Jesus is here. So when my eyes can see you, Lord, I still feel you, Lord. My heart knows you're here. When my ears can hear you, Lord, I still feel you, Lord. My heart knows you're here. My heart knows you're here. You're you're here, you're here, Lord, I know you're here, you're here, you're here, Jesus is here. Through this prayer I proclaim, Jesus Christ is King, close your eyes and know Jesus is here. Thank you so much, Heaven Sound, for leading us in that amazing praise and worship. We are so happy to have you guys part uh, out to be a part of our Sower LA family. Now, to continue, before we continue on with our program, I would like to invite everyone to take a moment, if you do have time, to visit our website, www.sowerla.com. And if you would like to contribute uh, to this ministry so that we can continue to provide the message of God all over the world. I mean, right now we're we're streaming here live on Facebook. We're also streaming live on YouTube and we're reaching so much more and so many more people around the world, around the country through this media. And our goal as a ministry, our vision as a ministry is to one day have our own channel on television so that we can continue to evangelize, have our own radio station um and to con our own podcast so many visions that we have in our ministry and we can't do it without you so if you do have a chance and an opportunity please go ahead and visit www.sorla.com we would really appreciate it. and thank you so much to everyone that's joining us tonight so um as we continue with our program tonight we have a very very awesome and amazing special guest speaker tonight i am super super excited um to hear his talk tonight i mean we all are um, so um without further ado i would like to present our guest speaker tonight rafael diaz deacon doug if you could please lead us in prayer for our brother before he starts his speeching Amen. Absolutely. I am excited tonight. Raphael Diaz is going to come and break open the word of God. Father in heaven, we pray for our brother right now. We pray that come Holy Spirit, fill him with your power. Come Holy Spirit, fill him with your presence. Come Holy Spirit, let the word of God become so plain to us. Let the word of God become so real to us, O oh, oh God. Let the word of God become so relevant to us that we get set on fire so we can go and make a difference in our world. We ask God's blessing on our brother Raphael and that God will continue to strengthen him and build him up and give him all the graces that he needs. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the life-giving spirit. Amen. Amen. Alrighty, so I'm on now, I guess. All righty, thank you so much for that, Deacon. Um, well, it's a great blessing to be here with all the sowers. I know uh, some of the sowers are watching us right now. We're actually live, so it's a great blessing. Great blessing to be here. Um, really hot day out here in California today, especially out here in the San Gabriel Valley area. I don't know how it was out there in the city, but we're still here. We're glad the Holy Spirit is, is moving in this church. Holy Spirit never stops moving. 
which is great, man. You know, we all serve, we all serve the Lord in a way. Some of us serve the Lord in this way. Some of us serve, serve the Lord in this other way. But here, here we are, man. Here we are. No matter the circumstances, no matter the moments, we, we have to keep enduring. We have to keep enduring. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 13, he who endures till the end shall be saved. That's really important. And those are really powerful words. He who endures till the end shall be saved. So we have to keep that in mind every day of our lives here on this earth. We have to endure till the end. Till the end. We have to keep pushing, man. We have to keep pushing. You know, I know we're going through difficult moments right now. Uh, we're going all through this virus, COVID-19 situation going on. I know in a lot of places, uh, there's still people in quarantine. You know, it, it's, it's difficult moments. Uh, I get it. But it's actually in the difficult moments when we actually have to seek God even more. You know, I was just talking to a person the other day. And I was telling this person, seeking God when you have everything, when everything is, is going smooth, that's easy, man. That's easy. Anybody can do that. But seeking God when things are going really, really, really tough, you know, when things are just seems like everything's about to just literally go fall, fall apart, you know, that's where we actually know who the real Christians are. So that's something to always keep in mind, you know, really important. And to everybody that's watching me right now, you know, I'm sure you're not the only one going through a difficult moment. We all are, man. We all are. But we have to keep trusting in the Lord, keep pushing and just put our confidence and our faith in the Lord. So um, having said that, tonight I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about apologetics. Apologetics is a topic, subject in the church that a lot of people actually don't even know that it really does exist. <laughs> and I know this because I work with a lot of people in the church. It's a little sad, but uh apologetics is something that is really really extremely important in the church because apologetics teaches us to defend our faith one thing we have to be really clear about is that defending our faith doesn't mean we have to fight because a lot of people have a totally wrong concept they have a totally wrong vision of about uh, of apologetics I've known people in the church that we want to speak about apologetics and no, no, let's just don't fight. Let's not get into that. And, you know, I think to myself, wait a minute, but apologetics is not about fighting. Apologetics is about defending. That's two different things. Two different things. When we do apologetics, we're defending our faith. We're not fighting. We never fight. We're not supposed to do that. But we are called to defend our faith. We are called. I remember this one time I told this person, there's only one church, only one. That's the Church of Christ, and that's the Catholic Church. And I remember this person told me, you know what, let's just not get into that because faith is not about fighting. And it really shocked me because this was a Catholic, you know, a Catholic person telling me that. And all I, all I told that person was, wait a minute. Telling somebody that there's only one church is not fighting. Telling somebody that there's only one church, it's a biblical truth. Biblical. 100% biblical. When you tell somebody with love, obviously, right, with love. When you tell somebody there's only one church, that's a biblical truth. That's not fighting. You're saying something that the scripture says. Let's go to Matthew I want to read Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. This is a really powerful uh, verse in the Bible. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. Scripture says, And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. There you go. My church. Jesus doesn't say my churches. Jesus didn't say that, okay? Nowhere in the Bible did Jesus say, my churches. No, Jesus said, my church. What does that mean? There's only one. Only one church. No more. So when you tell somebody, there's only one church, you're actually saying something that's so biblical. You're saying something that is so true. You're not fighting. And you know, that, that, that's why we have to teach more apologetics 
so that our youth in the church and not just the youth, but everyone in general can understand what apologetics is. And that is really important to, to, for me to say that, you know, because I don't want nobody to be watching right now thinking that, well, apologetics, you know, they're going to be talking about Protestants. No, we're not. We're going to be talking about how we are supposed to defend our faith as Catholics, you know, and that's really important. And this is, and, and I'm going to say it because, I mean, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys know me and you guys know that I don't play games when it comes to preaching the word of God, because you can't play games when you preach the word of God. The word of God is something serious. It's something real. You have to keep it real, man. You can't sugarcoat. And today, one big problem that we have in the church is that a lot of people don't read the scripture. They don't read the scripture. And it's like, how are you going to be able to defend the faith? How are you going to be able to know how to defend your faith when you don't even read the scripture? Impossible. Impossible. As a matter of fact, one of the saints in the Catholic Church, he said this phrase, which is really powerful. Not knowing scriptures is not knowing Jesus. Not knowing scriptures is not knowing Jesus. What does that mean? That if you don't know the scripture, if you don't know this, if you don't know the scripture, you can't know Jesus. For me to know Jesus, I have to read the scripture. You know, when I preached to the youth, last time I, I was actually preaching to the youth, I remember it was in Alabama. It was amazing, man. And I remember because I went to Alabama and I believe it was Elderville, Alabama, if I'm not mistaken. I thought like, you know, it's Alabama, you know, a person coming from SoCal, it's like, is there even life out there? You know, I thought to myself, I was obviously, I wasn't going to tell nobody out there, but but, you know, it's, it's amazing how the Lord just surprises you. When I get to the parish, complete full parish, man, packed, full. It, that parish was completely full, man, completely full, man, of nothing but young people. Nothing but young people, man. And, and it's, like the, it's like if the Holy Spirit told me, don't ever talk because I'm the one that does this. Not you, but me. And when I get there, you know, I start teaching apologetics to, the, to these young guys, you know, a lot of them, you know, coming from, from a hard life, you know, gangs, et cetera, you know. And at the end of the day, you know, they would walk up to me and tell me, brother, I had this mentality about apologetics, but now I see that it's not like that, man, you know. And some of them even told me, I didn't like you, man. My parents forced me to come here and I didn't like you, but I'm sorry, you know, like I was just like, oh, well, thank God, you know, because... I get that a lot, believe me. I'm already used to it, but we're here to please God. You know, we're not here to please human beings. We're here to please, please God. So having said that, you know, I noticed the importance of apologetics. Why we have to teach the youth apologetics? Because we need to teach the youth that you need to read the scriptures. If you cannot read the scriptures for at least five minutes a day, and li listen to this because this is really important, man. At least five minutes a day. If you're not able to read the scripture for at least five minutes a day, wow, you have a serious problem, brother. You have a serious problem, sister. That means there is no passion for the Lord. Walking with the Lord is something really serious. And we are only able to know the Lord. We are only able to know our faith if we read the scriptures. And first rule of, apo of uh, apologetics, and listen to this. It's really important. If, you have, if you're writing this down, please write it down because this is really important. First rule of, of apologetics. Not everything in the scripture is literal. No. I... I you don't even imagine, but this is a really big problem in the church. And I'm going to explain why. And you're going to see why I'm saying this. But not everything in the scripture is literal. We can't fall into that error of thinking that. Because if we take the scripture literal, we're really going to get confused. And I've seen this in the church with a lot of youth. I remember one time, I forgot where this was, but... This, this young person walked up to me and that person told me, you know, I don't call the priest father. And I'm like, why is that? Because the Bible says that we should not call nobody father on this earth. So I don't know why the Catholic church doesn't teach its people that they cannot call the priest father. 
he's just a priest, but I don't call him father. And, and I knew why he was saying that. <laughs> and I was like, brother, can I explain this to you? You know, and that's the importance. That's why I'm telling everybody that's watching me. You can't take everything literal. There are things in the Bible that are literal, but there are things in the Bible that are not literal. And I'll explain. I'll put I'll put examples, and I'm gonna say this with the with the with the scripture, okay? With the Bible. I have my Bible right here. Talking about literal. If everything was literal in the Bible, we would be in really serious problems. Really serious problems. Let me tell you why. Let's read Matthew chapter 5. I want to read Matthew chapter 5, verse 29. Listen to what the scripture says here, okay? This is really important. If your right eye, I'm going to say it again. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. <laughs> wow, now this is interesting. You know why? Because I know for a fact that we're all sinners. We're all sinners. And the Bible says, the scripture says, Matthew 5, 29, if your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out. Imagine if the Bible was literal. Imagine if the scripture was literal, literal 100%. None of us would have eyes because we're all sinners. Can you imagine that? So when you read this passage of, passage of the Bible, common sense. Jesus is saying this. Jesus is saying this, but there's a deep teaching behind this. It's not literal. It's not literal. Of course, it's not literal. You can't take everything literal. Really important to never forget that. Never forget that. I'll put another example. Let's read John chapter 10, verse 9. John chapter 10, verse 9. I'm trying to do this like really simple because I don't want to confuse anybody. I know there's probably people watching me that are barely starting to read the Bible. So I'm trying to do this really simple to not confuse you. Let's read John chapter 10, verse 9. Listen to what Jesus says here. This is really, really important. John chapter 10, verse 9. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. Jesus says, I am the gate. But wait a minute. If the Bible was literal, that wouldn't make no sense. Because if Jesus was to tell me that, I am the gate. I could easily tell him, no, you're not. You're a human being made of flesh, just like me. What do you mean you're the gate? I know what a gate is. What do you mean you're a gate? We obviously know that when Jesus is saying, I am the gate, it's not literal. His words in a way are symbolic, but it's leading us to a truth. Yes, Jesus' words are leading us to a truth. But he, he's using this type, type of symbolic way to lead us to a truth. It's not that he is a gate in the, in the literal sense. Of course not. But if you read the context, I'm only reading verse 9 because it's not going to give me the entire time to read the context. But all of you people that are watching this, in your house, read the context. You know why? Because when you read the context, you're going to notice that his people didn't complain. His people didn't whine. Why? Because they knew that his words were symbolic. They were leading to a truth. It's a teaching, yes, but in a symbolic way. His words are in a symbolic way. They caught on to that. Yes, sure they did because nobody complained. Now, let's read John chapter 15, verse 5. John chapter 15, verse 5. If you guys, if you guys notice this, everything I'm going to say, I'm going to say with the Bible. I don't like to talk without the Bible. I've always been a preacher that loves to talk with the Bible. John chapter 15, verse 5. Listen to what Jesus says. I am the vine. I am the vine. We all know what a vine is. If this is literal, then I can tell Jesus, no, you're not. You're a human being made of flesh. What do you mean you're a vine? What do you mean you're a vine? Doesn't make no sense. 
If this was literal, obviously. But let, then listen to what Jesus says about us. Listen, okay? I am the vine, you are the branches. If this is literal, this doesn't make sense. What do you mean I'm a branch? I'm a human being. I'm made of flesh. There's bones in me. What do you mean I'm a, I'm a branch? What do you mean you're the vine and I'm the branch? If it's literal, it doesn't make sense. But if you read the context, you're going to notice something here. Nobody complained. His people, they didn't whine. Nobody said anything. Why? Because they knew that his words were symbolic leading to a truth. No one complained. Read the context so you can see that I'm not lying to you. They knew his words were symbolic. Now, having said that, I put two examples of why the Bible is not literal 100%. But there are verses in the Bible that are literal. Oh, yes, they are. I'll put one. John chapter 6, verse 54. John chapter 6, verse 54. Listen to what the Bible says here, man. This is powerful right here, man. I'm feeling the, the presence of the Holy Spirit now. <laughs> I really miss the prayer groups, man. I, I wish I can go back soon, you know, when all this is done. Because, you know, when you preach the word, man, you start feeling that presence of the fire of the Holy Spirit in you, man. When you start teaching, you know, the truth of the church, man. John chapter 6, verse 54. Listen to what Jesus says. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. If this is literal, it sounds a little weird. Oh, yes, it does. That's why today a lot of people don't believe Jesus. That's why a lot of people today don't believe in the Eucharist. Why? Because they say, oh, no, that's ridiculous, man. How can you guys believe that Jesus is present there? When Jesus was saying this in the Bible, it was symbolic. Uh-uh-uh. This was not symbolic. No, no, no. This was literal. And you know how we know that? Because if you read the context, did they complain? Did they, did, did they whine in this context? Yes, they did. They didn't whine. On the other verses of the Bible that I read, they didn't want, and you can prove that by reading the context in your house. But in this context here, oh, yes, they do complain. Listen to what the verse, listen to what verse 60 says. Right here in the same chapter, but verse 60. Verse 60 says, then many of his disciples who were listening said, this saying is hard. Who can accept it? This saying is hard. Who can accept it? They were taking Jesus' words literal. What do you mean you're going to give us your flesh to eat? What do you mean you're going to give us your blood to drink? This is hard. Difficult to, to understand this. Nobody's going to believe you. Your words are just too hard. They were taking his words literal. And today we see a lot of people like that. They don't believe what Jesus says. And you know what's interesting about this verse? That it clearly says, then many of his disciples. In other words, the people that were saying these words are, are hard were his own disciples. It wasn't people that, that didn't know Jesus. It wasn't people that didn't follow Jesus. It was people that were following Jesus. It was his own disciples. The ones that were saying, no, man, this is just too hard. These words are hard. They knew that Jesus was talking literal. They knew it. And they just didn't want to really accept this to the point that, listen to what happens on this same chapter, verse 66. Verse 66 says, as a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life. And no longer accompanied him. Look, you see where all this led to? His words were just so strong that everybody just went back to their, to, to their old ways. 
That's what happens when you don't believe Jesus, man. That's what happens when you invent your truth, but don't believe the truth of God. You go back to your old ways. You go back to your own wicked ways. That is what happens. And that is why it's really important to read the Bible. So that we don't fall into heresy. So that nobody can come and say to us, images are bad, man. You guys can't have them. Haven't you read Exodus chapter 20 verse 4? A lot of people read that verse in the Bible and, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm not going to have images no more. You know? We can't do that no more, man. We have to tell the world today, read the Bible, read the scripture, know Jesus, know your faith. You can't love what you don't know. Jesus is present in the Eucharist. There is power in the Eucharist. If we read verse 67, listen to what Peter said. We have to be like Peter. Listen to this. Jesus then said to the twelve. Do you also want to leave? You see how Jesus is not backing down? You see how Jesus is not saying, hey, come back. Come back. I'm sorry. You guys misunderstood my words. I'm sorry. I was talking symbol symbolic. No, Jesus didn't say that. They took off because I spoke the truth. Oh, well, he looks at the 12 and says, do you guys want to leave too? When you speak truth, a lot of people are going to leave your life. When you speak the truth, when you're in favor of the truth, you're going to be a nobody to the world. You guys want to leave too? But listen to what, what Peter says. Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. You know what Peter is telling Jesus here with these words? Master, it's really hard to understand what you're saying. It's almost impossible. That's why everybody has left. But if you're saying it, I believe you because you have words of eternal life. The sacrament of the Eucharist is a sacrament that we have to believe by faith. By faith. The Eucharist is not about seeing. It's about faith. Peter spoke in faith. You have words of eternal life. In other words, it's impossible to believe you. Hard to believe you in the flesh. But if you say it, I believe you because you have words of eternal life. The sacraments are by faith. That is the importance of, ap of apologetics. It teaches us to love our faith, to defend our faith. It's not fighting. It's not fighting, no way, man. But coming back to the other topic, having said that, why do some people say, you're not supposed to call a priest father? Well, let's read it. Matthew 23, verse 9. Matthew chapter 23, verse 9. Now, if you don't read the Bible, if you're watching me, <laughs> if you're watching me and you don't read the Bible, Strap your seatbelt on because you're about to listen to something that's going to be like, oh, wow. But let me explain, okay? Don't jump into conclusions like fast, okay? Let me explain. I'm going to read it, then you let me explain. Matthew chapter 23, verse 9. Listen to what Jesus says. Call no one on earth your father. You have but one father in heaven. These are words from jesus i'll read it again call no one on earth your father you have but one father in heaven call no one on earth your father that's why this young person told me where does the priest live he actually told me like this does the priest live in mars does the priest live in Jupiter? No, the priest lives here on earth, like all of us. Jesus says, do not call no one father on earth. Our only father is in heaven. You know, what happens when you don't know your faith? What happens when you don't read the Bible? 
Imagine if it was one of you guys that don't read the Bible, that don't know how to defend the faith. Can you imagine what you, you would have told this person? I mean, it's something to really reflect on. Oh, when you tell somebody I'm Catholic, something serious, brothers, something serious, sisters. It's not just about saying I'm Catholic there. No, it, you're, you're saying something serious. So I, I remember I looked at him and I told him, well, can I, can I prove it to you that it's not literal? And he looks at me and he's all like, I don't think you can prove me that because it's right there. <laughs> That's what happens, you know, psychologically, you know, when, when, when you just close your bubble, Anything that anybody comes and tells you, even if it's the truth, it's like, no, I don't want to hear it. That's why it's really dangerous when you live in your own bubble, man. So then I told him, can I prove to you? Give me a chance. Let me prove to you that it's not literal. So he sat down. He's like, all right. All right. Prove to me that it's not literal. And if you prove it to me, I'll start calling the priest father again. I'm like, thank you. That's all I wanted. Just one chance. I'll prove it to you that it's not literal. Jesus' words have a meaning here. But it's not literal. And I'll prove it to you with Jesus himself. And I told him, I want to start off on John chapter 7, verse 16. John chapter 7, verse 16. Listen to what the scripture says here. Man. John chapter 7. Verse 16, Jesus answered them and said, my teaching is not my own, but is from the one who sent me. My teaching is not my own. This is really important, people. You know why? Because everything, everything that Jesus taught in this earth, he received it from the Father. Yes. Jesus didn't make up anything. Everything that he came to teach here on earth, he received it from the Father. I'll read the verse again. Jesus answered them and said, my teaching is not my own, but it's from the one who sent me. Now, why am I saying this? Why? Because let's see what the, what the Father, God the Father's teaching is. If we want to know what God the Father's teaching is, we have to read the scripture. Apologetics is defending the faith with scripture. Apologetics is not saying, well, I think the moment you say that, you failed. We can think, of, we can think about a lot of things, man. But when it comes to apologetics, you can't say, I think, eh, error. It doesn't work like that. Bible, Bible, show me the scripture. That's apologetics. Let's see what God the Father's teaching is. John, let's go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. And I want everybody that's watching, keep in mind Matthew 23, 9. Jesus said not to call no one father on this earth. Yes, the Bible says it, okay? Keep that in mind. Please keep that in mind throughout the talk. Do not call no one father on this earth. Matthew 23, 9. Jesus said that. Yes, okay. Listen to what Genesis chapter 2, verse 24 says. This is powerful. Listen. Then God said, let, wait. Oh, I'm sorry. I was reading chapter, it's chapter 2, verse 24. I got to get used to this Bible, by the way. Brand new Bible. I'm, I'm First time I use it today. They gave me this Bible two days ago, and I wanted to use it for the first time here in this talk. So I still have to get used to this Bible. Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Scripture says, that is why a man, listen, okay? Please, people, listen, because we have to be wise. We need to stop being ignorant when it comes to the word of God. So please listen, pay attention. This, that is why a man leaves his father and mother and unites to his wife. And the two of them become one body. 
Huh? Interesting, huh? The word says that man leaves his father. Is it the one in heaven? No. No, because he, le he leaves his father and mother, unites with his wife, and the two become one body. So we do have a father in this earth. Yes, we do. And can I call him father? Yes. So here it's like, wait a minute. You're actually right. So, so why is Jesus saying over there not to call no one father on this earth? But over here it says that, that a man will leave his father and mother. Huh. Now, now I'm starting to think. Well, that's apologetics. Apologetics is to make you think. <laughs> that's apologetics. To make you think. Now let's go to Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. This is where it talks about the commandments. Commandments. We have 10. Listen to what Exodus chapter 20, verse 12 says. Honor your father and your mother. Wow. Wow, people. Honor your father and your mother is it the father from in heaven no it's the father here on earth honor your father and your mother exodus chapter 20 verse 12 so the question is why is jesus saying not to call no one father on earth but as we can see we do have a father so how am I supposed to call him? I don't know about you guys, but if I was to call my dad by his name, he would probably slap me. I can't disrespect him like that. I need to call my father, father. If you're a dad and your kids come and tell you, I don't know what your name is, maybe Juan, whatever your name is. If they call you by your name, I'm sure you're not gonna be really happy. So the question is, why is Jesus saying not to call no one father on earth? Well, you know what? I'm going to prove to you with the Bible that Jesus actually taught that we are supposed to honor our father here on this earth. And it's in the Bible. I'm going to prove it to you. The same Jesus that said, don't call no one father on earth. That same Jesus. Listen to what he says in Mark chapter 10, verse 17. Mark chapter 10, verse 17. Oh, this is powerful right here. Mark chapter 10, verse 17. This is where it talks about the rich man. Tradition says he was approximately 14, 15 years old. He was a rich kid. One day he goes to Jesus, a rich kid. And listen to what happens. Mark chapter 10, verse 17. As he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up, kneeled down before him, and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? You know something? At least he's smart. Why? Because he's asking him a good question. He wants eternal life. What must I do to inherit eternal life? And you know why I stop here? And because we really need to reflect on this. Because today, a lot of young people, you know, they ask Jesus a bunch of things, but a lot of the times, it's, it's really, let's be honest, nonsense. At least he's asking something good, man. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Listen to what Jesus responds. Jesus answered him, why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Listen to, listen to what comes. Everybody, I want everybody. Listen, listen. I'm, I'm already excited, man. I'm already excited. You know, I'm sorry, but I'm already excited, man. <laughs> listen, to, listen to what Jesus says next, okay? You know what? Let me read it again because this is powerful, okay? You know the commandments. You shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, 
you shall not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. Wow. Yes, Jesus said that. The same Jesus that in Matthew 23, 9 said, don't call no one father on this earth. That same Jesus is telling the rich kid, the rich man, honor your father and your mother. My question is, is Jesus contradicting himself or people are just not understanding the scripture? <laughs> I think the answer is pretty clear, right? Pretty simple. Huh. I'm pretty sure I left a lot of you guys thinking now. I'm pretty sure. Come on, reflect. Use your brain, man. You see how powerful the scripture is? A lot of people say, oh, the Bible is boring. No, you're boring. The Bible is powerful. The Bible can transform your life. The Bible can, keep, can give you wisdom. Jesus said, don't call no one father on this earth. Now he's saying, honor your father and your mother. I mean, reflect. Obviously, I'm going to give you the answer. <laughs> But I want you guys to reflect. I really want you to reflect. Because this is powerful. And that other people teach the same thing. That other people in the Bible teach that it's okay to call father, to call someone father on this earth. That is not your biological father. Yes. And I'm going to prove that to you with the Bible. What better example than St. Paul? The great St. Paul. Apostle of the Gentiles. Let's see what 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15 says. I want everybody to, to write this verse down. I need you to memorize this verse of the Bible. First letter to the Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 15. And this verse of the Bible always gets me really excited, really hyped up, really pumped up because it's powerful. Listen to what Paul says here. All you Catholics that are watching me, listen to this. Verse 15. Even if you should have countless guides to Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. For I became your father in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Wow. <laughs> wow. This is powerful, man. You heard what Paul just said? In case there's somebody that didn't listen, I'll read it again because this is powerful. Even if you should have countless guides to Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. For I became your father in Christ Jesus through the gospel. What is Paul telling everyone? What is Paul telling them? I am your spiritual father. I have taught you the gospel. You guys are my children. I am your father. You guys may have a lot of guides to Christ, but father only me. You guys are my children through the gospel. That is what Paul is telling them. That he is their spiritual father. This is powerful, man. So can we call someone on earth father in a spiritual way? Yes. Yes. And you know why I'm saying this? Because I remember one time this person that's not Catholic told me this. Scripture there says, no, don't call no one father on this earth. And I'm like, is it literal? Yes, it's literal. And then I, I showed him these verses of the Bible. You know what he told me when I showed him th these verses of the Bible? This is really interesting, Catholics. He looks at me and he says, but Jesus is saying, when Jesus says that in Matthew 23, 9, he's talking about not calling anybody father in a spiritual way. And you know what I told this person? The Bible doesn't say don't call no one father on this earth in a spiritual way. No. The Bible says don't call no one father on this earth. So what does that mean? That not even you believe it's literal. <laughs> uh, 
Ah, those are tactics. And when you don't know apologetics, when you don't know the scripture, you're going to fall into that. There's a lot of brothers that are not Catholics that don't even believe what they say. They say the Bible is literal, but at the end of the day, deep, deep inside, they don't even believe that. They don't. They don't. I'll give you other examples that it is legit to call people father on earth in a spiritual way. Let's see what Romans chapter 4, verse 16 says. Romans chapter 4, verse 16. Let's see what the scripture says here, man. And I hope you guys are writing all this down. If not, I'm sure the video is still going to stay up there, you know, so you guys can go over it. Romans chapter 4, verse 16. For this reason, it depends on faith so that it may be a gift. And the promise may be guaranteed to all his descendants. Not to those who only adhere to the law, but to those who follow the faith of Abraham, who is the father of all of us. Wow. So is Abraham the father of all of us? Yes. Does the Bible say that? Yes. Romans chapter 4, verse 16. Abraham is the father of all of us. Obviously, in a spiritual way. Our father in faith. Listen to what the book of James says. James chapter 2, verse 21. James chapter 2, verse 21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered his son Isaac upon the altar? What is James saying here? That Abraham is our father. Abraham is our father. And I'll put you another example. That there are fathers. Like you heard. Fathers. Father is one. Fathers, there's plenty of them. And I'll put it an example with the Bible that there are fathers. First letter of John. First letter of John. Chapter 2, verse 18. Listen to what the word says, man. The first letter of John. Chapter 2. Uh, let me see if I find it here. Chapter 2, verse 12. It's actually verse 12. I got that wrong. Verse 12. Here it's talking about the members of the community. Listen to what it says. I am writing to you, children, because your sins have been forgiven for his name's sake. Listen to verse 13. This is powerful. Listen. I am writing to you, fathers. I'll repeat it again. I am writing to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. And then I'll jump to verse 14. Listen to what verse 14 says. I write to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. What is John saying? I write to you, fathers. So is it wrong to call someone on this earth father in a spiritual way? No. No. So then the question is, and here comes the answer. Then why did Jesus say, do not call no one father on this earth? To understand the text, we have to read the context. Because if we don't read the context, we're going to misinterpret the Bible. If we go back to Matthew, if we go back to Matthew chapter 23, obviously verse 9 is where it says that. Do not call no one father on this earth. But if we go to Matthew chapter 23 and we start from verse 1, listen to what the Bible says. Then Jesus spoke to the crowds and to his disciples saying, the scribes and the Pharisees 
have taken their seat on the chair of Moses. There it is. There it is. That's the key. When Jesus is speaking here in Matthew 23, everything that he's saying, it's going towards the scribes and the Pharisees. Who were the scribes? Who were the Pharisees? They were people that knew the law of Moses. They knew it in their minds. They knew it by memory. But what was their big problem? They didn't obey the law. They didn't follow the law. They knew it, but they didn't follow it. It's like a, it's like a bunch of us Christians, right? We know the Bible, but we don't, we don't practice it. Same thing with the scribes and the Pharisees. They knew the law, but they wouldn't practice the law. So Jesus is actually throwing some really strong rocks right here towards them in this chapter. Because the Pharisees were people that wanted everybody to look at them like, like, if, they, like if they were already a father from heaven. They would love to put everyone down. They would love to point everyone. Their finger, they would point it at everyone. And then Jesus comes and tells them, no, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. And that is why it's really important to read the context. If we go to verse 12, listen to what it says here. And I want you guys to highlight that. Because this is important. Whoever exalts himself will be humble. But whoever humbles himself will be exalted. There you go, man. The Pharisees, the scribes, they didn't want to humble themselves. They literally wanted everybody to look at them like if they were a father from heaven. They didn't want to humble themselves. So then Jesus comes and he has to speak to them like that. To make them realize, to make them reflect, you're just a human being. God the Almighty is in heaven. You cannot take his spot. No one can take his place. The powerful Almighty God, Father of heaven, we only have one up there. Nobody takes his place. The Pharisees, by the way they acted, they wanted to take his place. But Jesus is not saying this in a literal way to, towards everybody. Like I just explained in the Bible. And there are way more verses. There are way more verses. But it wouldn't just give us the time. And that's apologetics. That's why I'm saying this. That's why I'm preaching this. Because I want to open up your mind. I want to open up your mind a little. I want to give you a little bit of hunger to start reading the scripture. So that when somebody asks you, why do you Catholics do this? Why do you Catholics do that? Brother, let me explain it to you with the Bible. That's where there's power, man. When you're able to do that. And that is why it's so important to teach apologetics to the church. We need more youth today that can say, I want to defend my faith. I want to defend it because I have to go preach to all those youth that don't know about the Bible, that are confused, that go to mass every Sunday and they don't even know why they're there. You know, we have to start changing that. We have to get active. We have to start telling the Lord, give me wisdom to understand your word. Change me through your powerful word. Make me a new creature. I need to change. I want to leave my wicked ways. That is only possible through the word of God. And that's why we have to reflect and we have to pray a lot for all the fathers in the church. For all the priests, for all the bishops, for all the deacons, for the Pope. We have to pray for all these people that have been called to the sacrament of ordination. 
Because a lot of people today, they always point the finger at them. You know, the Pope, the Bishop, the priest, the deacon, they can do a hundred things, man. And out of those a hundred things, 99 of those things are good. And just one is bad. Which one do you think the people are going to see? The 99 good ones that they did? No, they're always going to see the one bad one. People don't care about the 99 good ones. They're always going to see the bad one. That's the society that we live in today. And if us Catholics don't, don't pray for all the fathers in the church, for all the bishops, for the Pope, for the deacons, how can we expect them to give us a lot? We need to start putting from our part. And what I'm saying here, I'm saying this from the heart, brothers. I'm saying this from the heart, sisters, because I'm passionate about Christ. Because I love God, because he transformed my life when I was only 14 years old. He took me out of my wicked ways. Imagine at the age of 14, I've been preaching the word since I was 15 years old. Who does that? Only the Lord. That's why I'm so passionate about defending my faith. And I am so happy. Every day of my life, I thank God. Why? Because, Lord, I thank you. Because you are having me as a servant of you in the Catholic Church, your church. So make me a blessing towards other people. Help me, Jesus. Help me. And in these difficult moments of COVID-19, hey, man, don't feel bad. Don't give up. Don't give up. Jesus is good. And if we have Jesus, nobody can be against us, man. Nobody. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. I know a lot of people are suffering right now. That's why we have to pray for each other. And I know right now we're going to do a, a really powerful prayer. You know, I'm already, the Holy Spirit already got me. <laughs> so we have to pray. We have to tell the world why they need to be in the church of Christ. It's incredible how many people leave the church. It's incredible if you read the statistics, not only here in this country, but also in Latin America, of how many people are leaving the Catholic Church every day. You know, we can't allow that no more, man. We need to start reading the Bible. We need to start knowing Jesus. And we have to repent from our sins. Benedict XVI, one of the biggest theologians that the church has ever had, Let's pray for Benedict XVI. Not too long ago, he said a phrase that really got my heart, man. It really got my heart. Benedict XVI said that the biggest enemy in the church is our sins. <laughs> he said that, Benedict XVI. The biggest enemy in the church is our sins. Imagine that. That's why we have to repent. That's why we have to ask the Lord to give us his grace. And brothers, we need to be united. No more divisions. That doesn't come from God. No more divisions, please. No more. And I'm saying this here live. I'm here to serve you guys, man. Whenever you guys need a hand, hey, man, reach out to me. I'm here. This is what we need to be doing right now. Be united. Be loving each other in the love of Christ. Love God, but truly, truly love him. And we can only do that through the word of God. If you don't read scripture, you don't know Christ. Two plus two is four. If you say it's five, I respect that. That's your problem, but it's four. <laughs> Same thing. If you don't read the Bible, you can't know Christ. You can't. So right now, I guess we're going to start a prayer right now. I know Deacon's going to uh, start leading the prayer for us. I'm, not, I'm obviously going to 
be part of the prayer, but it would be such a great blessing for me and a privilege for our deacon that's present here live to start our prayer for us. Thank you so much, Rafa, for that powerful. I mean, you threw some bombs in there that, wow, <laughs> that, I mean, I'm, I'm speechless right now. And I love the, the, the aspect that you brought of unity and being together as one and coming together, like you said, in prayer and, and knowing the word of God. And with that intent, um, we would like to show a video before we go into prayer um, that Deacon Doug would like to share with us before we go into our virtual altar call. Before showing the video, I would like to invite everyone right now to please share your prayer requests with us. We will do the best that we can to pray for all of your prayer requests. Um, so without further ado, uh, let us go ahead and watch this message from our Deacon Doug. My brothers and my sisters, this is Deacon Doug Johnson. I, I want to share a few moments with you about Sower LA. Sower Los Angeles' response and thoughts and feelings concerning George Floyd's public murder in the streets. His victimization of police brutality, this televised public murder, that murder triggered a worldwide protest, worldwide international uprising and protest against centuries of racism, injustice, and white supremacy. And I want to share with you some of the thoughts and feelings of SOAR Ministry Los Angeles. I'm, by the way, I'm very proud to be a member, a lead, one of the leaders of SOAR Ministry Los Angeles. The first leader that I spoke to was Melissa Zavala. That sister is on fire. She is fired up and ready to go. She has been out in the streets protesting she has been letting her voice being known. She is very righteous about how she feels about our brother, your brother, brother George Floyd. Not just him, but the rain, but the, the litany of, of our brothers and sisters who have been victimized because of racism and police brutality over the years. It's like enough is enough. Then I talk, then I told Melissa, let's talk to the rest of the of the SOAR members, the rest of the SOAR leaders of Los Angeles. And, I, and then they refreshed me, they inspired me. They they told me that they recognized that the first thing that we must do is pray. They recognize that this what they see is a spiritual battle. They realize that we are in the midst of spiritual warfare. We've got to take it to God like no other time. We've got to go into battle in prayer. And we've got to go into a, a, a novena of prayer. So they, so they started the novena to marry the undoer of knots. My favorite and the oldest novena the undoer of knots, to, to break the chain of racism, to break the chain of the sin of racism in our life. As a matter of fact, Sower LA ministry is biblically sound because according to Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, it says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and heal their land. Our land needs to be healed. So at first we're engaging in prayer. Yeah, we're engaging in prayer. And then we came to understand in our dialogue that 
We must start to understand one another. We must start to understand the struggles that we all go through. We must understand that our, our Latino brothers, our, our African American brothers and sisters, our white brothers and sisters, and our Asian brothers and sisters, all of us as Soar LA, who come from all different walks of life, must begin to understand each other. That's why I'm proud to be a leader of Soar LA, because we have created a sacred space where we can come from all walks of life, tear down the walls of division and separation, and begin to understand each other. We know now more than ever that we must become intentionally in a place of solidarity. We must become intentionally in a place of solidarity. And what that means is this. I'll tell you a quick story to kind of explain what that means. My mother is German and English. My father is African American. My parents moved into a multicultural community in San Francisco in the 1960s. The 1960s. I grew up in the 1960s in San Francisco. My father was away at work who was actually a, a civil rights activist, a union activist on the Longshoremen's Union. First African American Secretary Treasurer of the Longshoremen's Union. My parents got married in 1946 when it was against the laws to get married for a black man and a white woman to get married anywhere except for Seattle, Washington. They got married. My mom was home alone in San Francisco. My father was off to work. And, and so a, a white man knocked on the door. I think he was selling real estate. And he said, Madam, don't you know that jigaboos, those N-word people, are moving in to your community? My mother got so upset at the offensiveness of his language and his attitude and his arrogance she put her hands on her hips. She stepped off on the curb and she looked at him up and down and she said, Don't you know that I am one of them? Don't you know that I am one of them? She obviously didn't look like she was one of them, but she wanted him to know in no uncertain terms that she was one of them. I'm so proud to let you all know that the SOAR LA members, the Latinos, let me know that they are one of us. They believe that black lives matter. Just as much as Latino lives matter, they believe that at this time in history, it's time to stand in a place of solidarity and let them know that I'm one of them. Don't do it. Time is up. We're going into prayer. We're going into fasting. We're, then, after prayer and fasting, we're going to put our fasting, we're going to put feet in our fasting and I want to say one more thing. We are pro-life people. Because we're pro-life, we believe that not only in the sanctity of the unborn, but we also believe in the sanctity of the life of the African-American men and women who are being beat down and murdered and persecuted in the streets of our of our country. That's a pro-life position. SOAR LA is pro-life. That's right. We're pro-life. We're pro-African American who are being beaten in the streets. We're standing up for the sanctity of the life of men and women. We're defending the life of men and women 
who are being victimized by racism and white supremacy, black lives, is pro-life. Now, the last thing I want to say about that is this. We agreed that if we are going to be intentionally in solidarity, if we are going to be pro-life for black life, it's time to get involved and get engaged and be connected with somebody who's different than us. It's time to get involved and get engaged and getting connected with somebody outside of my own lifestyle, my own culture. It's time to get involved and engaged and committed to change in our community. That means possibly getting becoming part of the neighborhood council. That can means becoming maybe possibly get involved in the in the in the uh, police advisory board, community police advisory board. That means getting involved politically, engaging politically, letting your Catholic voice be known in the political system. That's right. That's right. That's what we agree on. And I pray, my brothers and sisters, that we do not let our voice become watered down. We do not let our voice, the fire of the righteousness of our Christian principles, go out as the days move on. I pray today that you and I continue to stay engaged and committed to the change that we, we want to see in our world. I want to close by sharing with you from Micah chapter uh, 6, verse 8. Micah chapter verse 6, six, verse, uh, six verse 8 says, God has shown you, O man and woman, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? This is what he requires of you. But to do justice, to love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. Do justice, walk humbly. Do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. That's the call that we have on our lives at SOAR LA today. We're we're going to be engaged. We're going to be committed to see a change in our world where there will be no police brutality. There'll be no racism. Where brothers and sisters will be able to connect and love one another all the days of their life. May Almighty God bless you with where we continue to fight for the destruction an annihilation of the sin of racism in our world. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. pray like we never have before. My, 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 my. It is time to pray. It is time to pray. My brothers and sisters, it is time to bring all of our concerns, all of our cares, all of our hopes, and all of our dreams to the Lord. 
when we bring our prayers and our hopes and our dreams to the Lord, he will take care of it. He will bring it into his sacred heart and he will transform our situations. We want to ask you right now, my brothers and my sisters, to gather together. We ask, want you to gather together. Collect together every prayer request. Collect together every need. Collect together every concern that you have, and we will give them to the Lord tonight. We will cast our cares on the Lord. We will give our needs to Jesus. We, we know that Jesus cares. We know that we, Jesus is still in the miracle working business. And we believe in the power of prayer. So Sister Rosa, what do we need to pray for tonight? We have our first prayer request uh, from our brother, Christian Perez. He's having, um, he says, let us pray for the peace of the world. May almighty God be merciful and grant to us peace. Yes, Lord. We lift up our world today. We lift up our world that is standing in the need of peace. We pray to Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah Shalom, we pray, come, Jesus, come and bring peace in our world. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for the peace of our world. We pray for the peace of America. We pray for brothers and sisters to reconcile with one another and experience peace that passes all understanding. For you are the Prince of Peace, Almighty God. Let us pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Um, as we wait for more prayer requests to come in, um, let us pray for those uh, suffering mental health, anxiety and depression during these difficult times that we're living in with COVID-19 and this movement of protests that we're seeing throughout our country. Yes, I was praying for a brother who had to go to the hospital because he was in such depression. I was praying for a family who is in such depression over this, uh, this uh, separation and uh, this uh, quarantine. Uh, so many uh, situations where uh, we go, we're going through uh, conditions and we cannot predict what's gonna happen next. And so many, People are feeling like they're just sinking and sinking sand. So we pray, Almighty God, give us a sense of security. Give us a strong foundation. Give us a sense of hope. Give us a sense that we still have destiny. There is still a plan for you, my brothers and sisters, no matter what you're going through. There is hope, there is blessing, there is peace for you, Lord. Continue to hold on to God's unchanging hand. We lift you up and we ask God's blessing in your life. We pray to the Lord. Amen. We have prayer requests from our brother Mario asking God to come down and win the spiritual war. Let us look for it. Let us look to you for wisdom and peace. Our sister Maria says, please pray for, for her husband and her husband's family for unity and peace. And our sister Mina, pray for the conversion of all sinners and broken homes. And our brother Mario is asking to please pray for his father who has been hospitalized with severe depression. Lord, we ask for healing right now. We ask for uh, Mario's dad for complete and total healing in his soul, healing of memories, healing of regrets, healing of all of the anxiety, healing in the deep parts of his soul, God. We pray that his soul and his heart 
and his spirit will be completely healed and receive peace beyond all understanding. We pray for a miracle right now for him. And God's in the name of Jesus, the healer. I'd like to ask Brother Rafa to pray for uh, our brothers and sisters who need salvation in their lives. Yes, dear Heavenly Father, we ask you to come down on all these people that need salvation, that feel like there's no way out right now in their lives. We ask you, Lord, to come down upon them and give them strength, give them hope so that they can start thinking differently, so that they can realize that you are the only living God, that you are powerful and that you can transform their lives. Give them hope, Jesus. Make them understand that you are the only way, the truth and the life towards the Father that you are the only way to happiness, that you are the only one that can heal their hearts, that you are the only one that can change their lives for the better, Jesus. Take them right now. Take their feelings, take their emotions, take everything and have control over that, Jesus. Cover them with your precious holy blood. Give them the power of your Holy Spirit so that they can receive blessings so that they can heal a lot of stuff that they probably have in their hearts hate envy only you know jesus give them the power and the strength so that they can overcome that and so that you you jesus can take total control of their lives jesus christ and so that they can realize that you are salvation and that if they are with you, they can truly, truly be free, Jesus. Break their chains. Break the chains of sin in their lives, Jesus Christ. We pray to you, Jesus, in your name. Amen. We have prayer requests from our sister Mary, praying for all those that feel unappreciated to not give up, that they know that God sees it all and that they will be rewarded by him. We have Sister Ashley, who is asking prayers for all of the youth that they may have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, especially for the conversion of her sister, Caitlin. Jesus, I trust in you, she says. We pray for our sister Mary, and we pray for our sister Ashley. We pray right now for all of the youth in our world. We pray right now for the youth, especially the youth that feel like they can need to live life on their own terms, that feel like they need to live life on their own conditions and feel like they can do things on their own. Oh God, bring our young people to the knees. We ask you, Lord, to bring them to the foot of the cross, oh God. Bring our young people to you, Jesus. Every knee shall bend and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord of Lords. We ask you, Lord, to invade their space right now. Invade the space of our young people. Oh God, right now we pray for a supernatural move of the Holy Spirit. We pray right now for a supernatural move of the Holy Spirit in our streets and our cities, especially the young people who are out protesting. Oh God, touch their hearts, touch their spirits, convict their hearts, oh God. Bring them to you, bring them to Jesus. Continue to lift up the spirit uh, lift up Jesus. Let them worship Jesus in the streets. Give them visions of the Virgin Mary. Give them visions of angels. Give them visions of Jesus. Let them turn their hearts to Jesus. For Jesus, you are the answer for the world today. You are the healer. You are the redeemer. You are the 
one that will change our world. You are the hope for our world, oh God, especially in the lives of our young people. Oh God, I see it now. I see a, a move of the Spirit. I see a move of, of the power of God. I see Jesus changing lives. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for doing what we cannot do. Jesus, you are the healer, you are the redeemer, you are the liberator that came to kept this came to set the captives free. We pray in the name of Jesus, the lover of our souls. Amen. Amen. We have our brother Jason who says, uh, pray for Noah Talon, who is struggling with muscular dystrophy. Uh, and for the Taylor family, pray for all the children with muscular dystrophy and those families that are taking this cross of taking care of their child with that illness. We also have our sister April asking prayers for her mom, for the Lord to restore health to her. She will be going through a minor procedure this coming Monday. She also likes to pray for the Lord to give us the courage and inspiration to humble ourselves listen to each other and to open to learning how we can love one another better just as our heavenly father loves us so today we pray for our sister april's mother God will give her the richest, most abundant outpouring of blessings that she has ever had. We pray for an outpouring of blessings and grace and favor in uh, April's mother's life. That April will give a testimony to the power of God in her mother's life. Even tonight, she will give us a testimony about how God is moving in her life. We give God thanks and praise for April is a praying woman. April is a woman of God. April is a woman that believes in the miracle working power of God. And we pray for all of our brothers and sisters who deal and all the caretakers who have to deal with muscular distress dystrophy. We pray for a healing of the body right now, a healing of, of the body. Let the muscles relax. Let the muscles just be released of any discomfort. Let the, let the God that heals move in their lives. And we pray the, for the caretakers that they will receive peace. They will receive comfort themselves. They will know, receive word from the Lord that they are doing the right thing. And then we pray for that, the, that, that our God, who is love, our God, who, in, who is the source of love, just continue to flow through each household that's represented, that the love of God continues to fill you, that the love of God continues to wash you, that the love of God just changes us into more loving people. You know, may the love of God just continue to bless us. Amen and amen. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. We have our sister Elizabeth who is asking prayers for all of our priests, deacons, and religious who have caused scandal in the church that they may have true repentance and contribution for what they have done and for the healing of those who have been hurt by their actions. We have Sister Paola who's asking prayers for the health of herself and her parents. Brother Rafa, would you take this prayer request, please? Pray for us, clergy. Pray for us to receive authentic, true reconciliation, repentance, and discipleship in the Word of God. Would you take yes, that Heavenly prayer? Father, I want to ask you, I want to invoke you this moment and tell you to bless all your clergy. Bless them, Jesus. 
give them the strength so that they can endure till the end from the Pope to the bishops, to the priests, to the deacons. Bless your clergy, dear Lord. Give them strength so that they can be faithful, faithful to the gospel every day of their lives. And I also want to ask you, Jesus, to give strength to all those priests, all that clergy that has caused scandal so that they can reconcile with you and the church so that they can truly, truly reconcile and do things the right way. We know we're not perfect, Jesus. We know that all of us can fail. But when somebody in the clergy does something that causes scandal, in a way it hurts the church really bad. And that's why we want to pray right now, this moment, for all those priests, for all that clergy that has fallen into that, that has caused scandal, Jesus, lift them up. Give them your strength. Give them, Jesus, the wisdom that they need so that they can start doing things right. And we ask you to heal. Heal the pain of all those families that are hurt because of the actions of certain members of the clergy. Give them peace. Give them, Jesus, the strength from heaven so that they can forgive, so that they don't hold any grudges against the church, against your clergy, because we know that we have a lot, a lot of good bishops, priests, and deacons. And we ask you, Jesus, to bless all of them and give them the strength so that they can endure and so that they cannot be defeated by Satan, so that they can serve the people of God the way you have called them to serve the people of God. We pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 We have our sister Mina, who is asking prayer requests for herself to have an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ and for her conversion also to increase her faith. She also prays for her Aunt Lupe, who is suffering from depression. She hopes that she will be healed and our sister Ariana is asking prayers for her brothers and her sisters. We pray for our sister Mina and Ariana and all of our brothers and sisters who need Jesus to come deeply into their hearts. We pray that Jesus would come into their hearts in a deep, deep way. That Jesus would take over. We say, come, Lord Jesus. Come quickly. Come into our hearts. Become the Lord of my life. Take over my life. You are all that I need and you are all that I hope for. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are all that I ever will hope to be. Jesus, you are the lover of my soul. You are my best, best, best friend. Jesus, I want you to come into my life and I want you to be my lover. I want to have a personal love relationship with Jesus with no shame in my game. That's what we pray for tonight for Mina and Diana and everyone else who needs that kind of a relationship. I want Jesus to have that kind of a connected, loving, personal relationship with you. I pray that God blesses you in such a way that you know, that you know, that you know. That there is nothing that will ever separate you from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. Oh God, we pray right now that your, your love relationship with him is unshakable. We pray right now that your love relationship with him that is on a firm foundation. We pray right now that your love relationship with him is one such that you will be able to continue to walk by faith and not by sight, trusting him. 
with all that you have. I trust you, Lord. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. I give my life to you this day and all the days of my life. Amen and amen. Amen. The last prayer request that I see on the comment section below is from our sister Elizabeth, praying for strong and holy and faithful vocations to the priesthood, permanent deacons, and religious life. We gather all of the prayers of the faithful believers. Me, myself, I'm celebrating on, on June 7th, my 12th anniversary as a permanently ordained deacon to the Roman Catholic Church in the Archdiocese of Los Angeles. June is a month of many ordinations of deacons and priests. We pray, O oh God, Actually, tomorrow is my 61st birthday. I pray, oh God, that you continue to call all clergy, all deacons, all priests, all religious brothers and sisters, all bishops, cardinals, and our beloved Pope Francis. Continue to call us, oh God, to holiness, righteousness call us to a place of humility where we continue to seek your face we continue to seek your obedience we continue to seek your guidance oh god we know that it's not our desire but it's your desire for us to serve you and the church and the people of god Oh God, help our hearts be broken for what breaks your heart, oh God. Help us to go more, be more out into the, the play, the, to the, help us to go out into the hedges and into the margins. Help us to get more engaged in the cause of the people. Help us to become more engaged in where the people are suffering. Help us to hear the cry of the suffering. Help us to hear the cry of the victims of violent crimes. Help us to hear the cry of the victims of police brutality. Help us to hear the cry of the victims of racism. Help us to stand in solidarity with all of those who are suffering in any way. Help us to let go of what is separating us from all of those who are standing in the need of prayer. Oh God, hear us. Oh God, hear us. Help the clergy to take off the labels. Help the clergy to tear down the barriers and walls of separation. Help the clergy to, 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 to suffer for others. That's what passion means. Help us to experience the passion of Christ and suffer for others. Help us to be a transformed presence of the presence of Christ, recognize, recognizing that the all sometimes the only presence of the church, the only presence of Christ, the pr only presence of the Word of God is when people see the presence of God in us, the presence of the church in us, the presence of the word of God in us. So help us to lay down our lives for one another. Dr. Martin Luther King said it like this. If I can help somebody as I travel along, I, then my living 
will not be in vain. Help us to love. Help us to serve. Help us to be present in the lives of those who are suffering and are out there trying to make a difference. May Almighty God just touch each and every one of those who have recognized. And I don't want to pray one more prayer of vocations. Yeah. We have another one here. One more prayer of vocations. See, yes, I know that there is somebody. I know there's somebody who feels the call of God in their lives. I know there's somebody who feels the call of God in their lives. And I want to pray that you say yes to the Lord tonight. I want to pray that you say yes. Uh, I believe that God wants me to be a deacon. I believe that God wants me to be a priest. I believe God wants me to be a, a nun. Or somewhere in your life, God is calling you. And if that's true, I want you to message me and I will direct you to the right place. Are there more prayers? <laughs> we have one last one um, from our sister Mary Torres asking uh, prayers for her godson Emmanuel Flores, um, who is a seminarian and studying in Rome and praying for all Sumerians in the yes. hand as well. Awesome. We can't forget about our seminarians. That's right. We can't forget about our seminarians. The same is Manuel Torres. Is that his name? Yes. Manuel Torres. Manuel Flores. Flores, like flowers? Yes. Manuel Flores. And then, of course, we can't forget to pray for our brother William King, who's in the Josephine Seminary, and all the other brothers and sisters who were in preparation and in, in discernment. God, we lift them up to you, O oh God, right now. We put them on the altar of grace, with altar of mercy, the altar of transformation. Continue to mold them and shape them and build them up in your most holy of faith, O oh God. Continue to put them, set their souls on fire, O oh God. Continue to guide them in the, in, the, in the direction that you desire for them, O oh Lord. Keep them focused on the prize. Keep their eyes on the prize. For the, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So we pray, Almighty oh God, for a blessing on all of the seminarians, all those in discernment, all those who are stepping into the life of the clergy and the diaconate and the, the, the religious life. We thank you, Lord, for this time of grace and mercy. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We say hallelujah. We shout hallelujah. We bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me. The reason we say hallelujah, we, the reason we say bless the Lord all this with, and all that's within me is because we know that our God is victorious. We know that we don't have to worry anymore because we know that our prayers have been heard by our God and we, we can trust that what we prayed for, he's doing it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm happy today. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Powerful. And before I head to my announcements, I do have a powerful testimony from tonight's virtual altar call, actually. Brother Mario says his mom just texted him randomly saying that her that his father is being healed by god from depression <laughs> praise <laughs> to god amen. amen amen and that is just one of so many testimonies that we will receive and that we continue to receive here at so la so la would not be what it is without you without you coming in and living these virtual encounter nights with us so thank you so so much and please please do continue to share um your testimonies with us and we can give those praises here live on on our facebook and our youtube page so thank you so 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 much 
for sharing that wonderful news with us, Brother Mario. We really appreciate it. And we're looking forward to all those future testimonies that we will be receiving tonight. So before we give our thank yous, I do have a couple of announcements, just three minor announcements. Um, a quick reminder that we, as Deacon said, and as we mentioned at the beginning, we are having the Healing Through Unity Novena that SORLA is holding uh, to pray in solidarity um, for the end of sin of racism and police brutality, um, standing together in solidarity and praying and fighting in this spiritual warfare with strong, strong prayer. So please uh, join us. We will be having this novena. Uh, we've been having this novena since Sunday and we're going to be ending it on Monday, June 15th, every night at 7 p.m. live here on Facebook and our YouTube channel. Also a quick reminder that our Sewing Hope Groceries for 50 Families fundraiser is still ongoing and we do have grants available. Do not be shy, do not be worried about maybe not qualifying for, I mean, honestly, we're here, this, this fundraiser is for you. We're trying to help you, those families out there in need. So if you have been affected by COVID-19 um, and are unable to bring um, food to the table for you and your families, please get in contact with us. You can send us an email at um, sowerministryla at gmail.com or give us a call at the number 424-216-6435. And all you have to do is give us your full name, your phone number or email, the number of members in your family, and tell us your story. How have you and your family been affected by COVID-19? That's basically all you need to do. Grants are available, but also to let you know, we still haven't uh, reached our goal. We're getting close, uh, we, we still haven't reached. The more we reach, the more families we reach. So if you can donate, please go ahead to our GoFundMe page and donate. And if you're unable to donate, please share the link with your families and friends to continue to donate. And lastly, um, next week, um, we will be having Bible study night, uh, and Deacon Doug will be teaching us uh, on Bible study, so please be able to join us. Um, it'll be on Zoom. It won't be live on Facebook or YouTube, so we will make sure to share that link with all of you on our social media platforms for our Bible study session next week at 7.30. Um, those are all the announcements I have for tonight. I do have an announcement from Deacon telling us that he will start fasting tomorrow. Um, so if you would like to come along and fast with him, you're more than welcome to. Please get in contact with him. And we are continuing to pray for you and with you. Um, thank you so much to everyone who joined us tonight. We would like to thank um, the leaders who led our novena. Um, earlier tonight, our brother Walter and sister Mari Cruz and all of the team from the Novena, thank you so much for what you're doing so far and what you will, what you will continue to do. We'd like to thank Heaven Sound for their amazing support and amazing praise and worship. Um, Rafael Diaz, thank you so much for giving us that powerful, powerful talk on Catholic apologetics. It was an amazing, very touching talk. And of course, Deacon Doug, Thank you so much for leading us in praise and, praise and worship. I mean, praise and worship. I mean, it's also praise and worship. Either way, virtual altar call. Thank you so, so much for, for doing that for us. And happy birthday to you. Happy early birthday to you. Yay. Early birthday to you, Deacon. Thank you so, so much for joining us tonight. We are looking forward to seeing you next week at our Bible study session. Have a wonderful night. God bless. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. You are my strength. I love you.
Son and the Holy Spirit. Hey, this is Brandon Vargas with the Sower Ministry, which is El Sembrador in Inglés. And I just want to invite you to continue to donate to this ministry. It just does great, great things. Uh, every penny that you give is not wasted. When you're watching television, that's paid for with your generous donations. When you hear us on the radio, that's because of you. So if you want to hear us continue to be on the radio, if you want to continue to see us on television, if you want to continue to go to the retreats and the congresos, that's all because of you. This is your ministry, and we just ask that you continue to give toward this ministry so that the word of Jesus Christ continue to be spread throughout the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you for listening. As children and servers of God, it is our joyful duty to sow the word of the Lord in the hearts of those people in need of it most, and in those that have never heard the name of Jesus. In turn, we hope that they too can make God's promises theirs and be sowers of the word as well. At El Sembrador Ministries, you can help spread God's love and mercifulness with a monthly pledge. Your pledge will help El Sembrador continue expanding its signal on radio and television so that more people can receive the good news of the Lord. Don't miss out on this wonderful opportunity to change a life and sow your own seed in this beautiful field of God. Please call us today with your pledge at 773-777-7773. Hi, this is Ramon Bordius with The Sower Ministry. I've got a place for you to surf, but it's not a beach. It's www.jesusthesower.com. There you will find testimonies of people giving their witness to Jesus Christ. You'll hear awesome preachings. You'll be able to submit prayer requests. You can get events that the Sower and El Sembrador will be doing. But most of all, you can start on your path to reconnect with your Savior, Jesus Christ. Remember, www.jesusthesower.com. God bless you.